welcome back to and Bitches back. in Business. <laughs> and we're back. Um, you know what that reminds me of is Jimmy I, Fallon. No, but well, kind of. But have you seen the movie Bedazzled? No. With Elizabeth Hurley and Brendan Fraser. No. Okay. First of all, you have to watch that movie. Um, Elizabeth Hurley is the devil. And Brennan okay. Frazier is like total dweeb, works at this call center. And, uh, you know, he's really in love with this girl that he works with who has no idea who he is. And so he just kind of says, like, I would do anything to be with that girl. Elizabeth Hurley, the devil, shows up and she's like, I'll give you seven wishes. No, no problem. You just got to give me your soul and I'll mm. give you seven wishes. So anything he wishes, it like then goes through each of his wish and like plays it all out very good movie okay the reason why i bring this up is because in one of them he wishes to be um an nba player (laughs) and he's got like these two guys on the sidelines that are being the commentators and the one guy's like oh you know he he looks like he's like standing you know seven feet tall seven eight feet tall and the other guy's like i don't think he's that tall (laughs) and he's like no no, i know it's just that you know he looks like he's a big giant and then he's standing like eight nine ten feet tall (laughs) he like talks so weird like he's a commentator so that's what that made me think of that's what i sound like okay anyways anyway that went really off track real fast (laughs) that's a good start for bitches in business as always so we had the super bowl this weekend yes we did it was a good game ali came over to our house to watch yes. it which was quite fun um i'm glad that we were all together to watch it because i wasn't sure if we were going to have a party or not so i'm glad that that all worked out yeah last episode we talked about some of our props bets and so we have recorded some of the uh the results and we'll go through those so Cher was correct with the blue Gatorade, which, you know, you I had my said answer. that. You had said that originally, and I don't know why you went with lemon lime. I don't lime. know. Like, I mean, where did I that think, even come I from? I think I was just on the spot. <laughs> well, you didn't choose very well. No, I didn't. Um, not really super shocking because it was the Rams, obviously, but mm-hmm. kind of disappointing because I would like to see another color. Like, it hasn't been red or pink I don't think pink's a color. It is, apparently. I read a lot about it. Oh. But I think red is fruit punch. Yeah. But I don't know what pink is, but it is considered Maybe it's just watered down fruit punch. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Um... So I got the point for that. Okay. Um, during the national anthem, no players were shown. Right. So we had both thought that Stafford was going to be shown. No player was shown during the anthem, which I, which I also I cannot talk today, <laughs> which I also thought was strange. Yeah. Uh, it was a good national anthem. Yes. We both thought that um, the anthem was going to be way longer than it actually was but we were still both correct in our guesses with it being over 95 seconds but it was still a very short anthem at a minute and 46 no a minute and 52 seconds i believe is what it officially ended up i timed it um we both got wrong that all five artists were not going to sing together they did in fact sing together did they yes at the very very end they all sang still dre together they were all on top of one of the little houses and there was like 50 cent and kendrick and mary j blige and mm. dre I don't and this. it for sure happened um i can pull up a photo to show you um you got it correct that a touchdown would be made in the fourth quarter yeah although i was very close to winning that because they it almost went a full quarter without a touchdown um the coin toss was heads mm-hmm. so you totally got that right i didn't realize that heads was chosen more than tails usually is that was really loud um like i know it's 50 50 but still you were very sure about about that okay go okay out of the last eight super bowls whoever won the coin toss lost the game really fun fact that is very very interesting the last team to win the coin toss and the game was the Seattle Seahawks. Wow, that's very good to know. I had no <laughs> idea. Uh, so, you know, what's interesting about that game specifically is that I was in Seattle for that game. It was my 21st birthday. Mm. They weren't playing in Seattle, but um, they were in the Super Bowl that year, obviously, and they won. And Melanie and I were in Seattle celebrating my birthday. We came out of the pub. We were at the Elephant and Castle. I remember that. 
which was a horrible experience, but that's <laughs> another story. And we came out to the streets and the streets were just going wild. And there's people waving flags and honking. There was confetti. It was so awesome. So nice tie into that story. Okay. Clearly, I had something to do with it. So... Um, <laughs> the first artist shown at halftime was Dr. Dre, but Snoop Dogg was the first artist to sing. So I'm going to take like a little bit of a half point on no. that. <laughs> so I'd say we were pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, we did better than I thought we were going to. So actually I did better than I thought that I was going to. <laughs> I knew that you were going to do good because you know more about football than I do. I mean, no, not that these really have anything to really do with football, football but still. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, it was a good game. I'm uh, I'm glad that we watched it all together and now we'll just wait for the next one. Yeah. And go Bengals for getting it pretty far into the Super Bowl and doing very, very well, but unfortunately not winning. No. Nope. Spoiler alert if you haven't watched it. <laughs> <laughs> if Which they haven't I'm watched it, they're sure not going that to. you have by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so since my unpopular opinion went over so well last week, um, I would just like to make a comment about the fact that there are more people that agreed with you that they like matching socks, but there are more people that agreed with me that they don't wear a lot of socks. Okay, well, I clicked the wrong thing. I know you did, but even without your vote, I still won. So thank you, everybody. Well, I mean, I guess it depends what kind of shoes you're wearing. That's true, I suppose. <laughs> I it just, should have been, do you wear socks with boots? That should have been the question. Then it would have been 99%. <laughs> All right, new question right here. Do you wear socks with boots? Do you boots? wear socks with boots? I like that. Um, my next unpopular opinion, um, and this is heavily fueled because of Valentine's Day yesterday, but I've been feeling this way for a while. Um, I really feel that the media puts a lot of effort into publishing ridiculous, trivial articles about celebrities. <laughs> and so, for instance, uh, two articles that I saw come up this morning were um, A, Kim Kardashian got a huge truckload of roses delivered to her from Kanye West. Mm -hmm. And two, Travis Scott got this like ridiculous, over-the-top arrangement for Kylie Jenner yeah. for Valentine's Day. I just don't see how this is news. And I, I say this kind of stuff all the time. Like, it's ridiculous. I, I don't care. I don't care. And what pisses me off is that the media constantly feeds into it. Because people are clicking on it. Exactly. Clearly. And then people engage with it. And it just perpetuates this huge cycle of exploiting and romanticizing excessive greed and these ridiculous, unrealistic expectations and it really is starting to bother me yeah the kardashians are like a huge aspect of that and what also really bothers me is that they have so much money collectively all of those people for absolutely nothing and they don't use it for anything they use it to throw these like huge <laughs> elaborate over-the-top parties for no reason when that money could be going to like help so many other people and like if a celebrity is out using their money for that kind of Stuff or just supporting charities or organizations mm -hmm. or talking about it more like I'm so happy to support that kind of stuff and feed into that and engage with it but I have such a hard time engaging with all these ridiculous stories about absolutely nothing yeah, I agree um I have unfollowed the Kardashians oh. from everything because I do not oh, yeah. care and then no. like the those articles are pointless anyway because we, if you follow them, you know you, about you it. You already know about this stuff. And if so you follow them, you care about that kind exactly. of stuff and you'll see that. And you don't need to read an article about it. And no. if you don't follow them, you don't need to click an article because you probably don't care. Well, exactly. I just don't like when I'm like trying to read the news and then I'm bombarded by all of these <laughs> dumb articles about nothing. And yeah. I just think something needs to shift with this too because a lot of celebrities are idols that a lot of people and kids look up to. Mm -hmm. And so when you're constantly being you know, bombarded with this lifestyle, you think that that's what an idol should be. And that's just not what I deem as somebody to look up to. And so I just think it's really unfortunate that that's what we're teaching our kids, you know? I agree with this opinion. I am so glad that you do. Thank you. That's one out of three opinions that you have agreed with. Huh. So we'll have a running count and we'll see how many I can get to. 
Hey, I'm already excited about my next one. Okay. Oh, and you're doing more than one. Oh, no, no, no. I mean next week. Oh, I've next already week. thought about what it's okay, going to be. It. I have a whole presentation to go along with it. It's going to be great. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm really getting okay. into it. Um, also, I have my top five ways for this week, but I should pass it on to you because I've been talking a lot. So is there anything <laughs> that you want to talk about, Allie? Um, the Super Bowl. We already talked about that. Oh, I wanted to clarify something that we talked oh. about last week. Okay. Is chicken pox still a thing? Oh, perfect. Okay. Sort of. I posted this video today. Yes, as I know. Back. That's what made me think of it. Mm. Um, the answer is sort of. Okay. Uh, I did not know there's a chicken pox vaccine. That's what I was wondering. There is a chicken pox vaccine. It was introduced in 2002. Hmm. It is 90% effective. Interesting. Um, you get your first vaccine around age one, and there's a booster between age four and six. Oh, okay. So it, is that an implemented vaccine that is given now to all children? Like, you know how there's, I, there's already vaccines that kids normally get when they're born regardless? Is that one of them? I believe so, but I'm okay. not sure. If I read a can few that. different articles that said, like, a bunch of different things. Mm-hmm. Um, That's really interesting. Yes. Because you'd assume that. I remember talking um, to Becca when her first child was born, and she was saying how there's kind of, like, a list of things that happen when your child's born, and there's a few different things that you're allowed to say, you know, that's not something that I want to have happen. Right. And I guess her midwife actually was the one that really said, these are your choices and you need you know make sure that you do your research for each individual one because you don't have to do any of them if you don't want to but obviously some of them are really beneficial while some of them haven't been thoroughly tested or isn't enough research behind it and so you don't have to do it if you don't want to which Mm -hmm. I always thought was so interesting because I'd never had anybody ever talk about that before and so I wonder if the chicken pox is something that's similar to that because you know shingles are something that are really can be really really bad and especially when it hits you on later in life when it's harder for you to recoup from something like mm-hmm. that so you know i mean i don't have a problem with getting a chicken pox vaccine if it means that i'm then not going to have that issue i later don't think on you can life. get the chicken box vaccine if you've had the chicken pox N- no i mean if i were if for my child oh, is I what see. i mean no obviously not <laughs> you're gonna go and get your chicken pox vaccine now <laughs> no but you know it's like I just, the only reason why I brought it up is because, like, I have pictures of me as a kid with chicken pox, and I've got pictures of, you know, like, my cousins with chicken pox, and I'm sure most of my friends have all had the chicken pox. Yeah, I did, for sure. Yeah. I feel like that was a very, like, common thing, where I just don't hear about it as much anymore. You know, you you watch shows from back when we were kids, Mm -hmm. and they talk about it, where I just don't, I guess maybe because I don't have kids, but I just feel like I don't hear it anymore yeah that's true so i just was wondering if that was like a new thing that i hadn't heard about so that's good to know hmm. was that specifically in canada that that was introduced in yes. 2002? Hmm. cool i like that thank you for following up on Be my crazy question welcome also is it spelled p-o-x or p-o-c-k-s <laughs> p-o-x okay i thought so <laughs> i was just wondering because when i spelt it with p-o-x i was like is this right am i doing this that's wrong? right why is it called chicken pox um, I don't know. I think it's because you look like a chicken with all your feathers pulled out. I don't think that's true. What else would it be then? I don't know. Okay, well, I'm going to look it up because I okay. think that that's a very, like, that makes sense. That's a rational explanation that well, I just gave you. Pox is obviously a thing because smallpox. That's a very good point. So. <laughs> okay. I never really thought about it like that. Why is it called chicken pox? Okay. <laughs> Etymology. How the term chickenpox originated is not clear, but it may be due to being a relatively mild disease. It has been said to be derived from chickpeas based on resemblance of the vesicles to chickpeas or to come from the rash resembling chicken pecks. Chickpeas? (laughs) (laughs) At no point while I was reading that did I know what the next word was going to be because none of that makes any sense to me. Oh my God. That's from Wikipedia. Like, that makes absolutely no sense to me. Okay. Okay, well... Maybe we should just move on. I think that that's a very good idea. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, Well, I will do my top five then for the week. Go ahead. So, my top five this week is top five ways that you can support a small business without spending any money. Okay. So, obviously, like, if you can spend money, that's also really important, too. But there's um, really good ways that you can support a small business... uh, 
by doing free things. So first is liking and following them on their social media channels. Um, really big, obviously, on Facebook and Instagram, but also things like TikTok um, or YouTube as those all connect to other apps. And so they all kind of talk to each other. And once they start to see that engagement, it really helps with the algorithm. Sharing your... Sh- I, don't, I can't talk today. Sharing content and engaging with that content as well. So um, Instagram, for instance, is really changing the algorithm lately. And so liking a post is great, but it's not enough to trigger the algorithm anymore. So things like sharing it, sharing it to your story, sending it to a friend or commenting is a better form of engagement. Um, Instagram is starting to change, as I mentioned, but it's they need 3% engagement in order to like trigger the algorithm. So things like commenting and tagging your friends or like saving that post to your collections is really big. Mm. Um, and same with like watching a full video because Instagram specifically will notice like how popular something is by how long people are engaging with it. So if you only watch a video for three seconds and then move on, it deems that as not popular. So then Uh, it won't push it to other people. I see. So, you know, like when somebody's posting something that's one of your friends, try to watch the entire thing. You know, even if it's not something that you're interested in, put it on mute and watch it for the 30 (laughs) seconds because it does really help people and it helps to promote and engage with their business. Um, Leaving a review, even if you've never bought the product, reviews can be really helpful in terms of things like, you know, the website looks really great or the product looks really interesting or the packaging looks, um, you know, really uh, creative. Something that can show other clients that you're getting good engagement because a lot of people will go and look for reviews and if you only have one or two reviews, Mm -hmm. then people start to look and go, ooh, is this a legitimate business? Like, you know, why do they have no reviews? Are they getting really bad reviews and no one's wanting to put them on there? Um, so a lot of customers will look at the quantity of the reviews as well to determine like credibility for the business. Um, I think this would be really important for like a realtor as well, because even if you've never bought a house from somebody, it's not like people write reviews for realtors and they're like, my house was so great. I love everything about my house. They're yeah. talking more about the realtor and yeah. they're saying things like they were really honest, trustworthy, mm-hmm. had a lot of knowledge. And that's something that you can easily say about a realtor without having to actually buy something from them, you know? So that can be really helpful with a a review for a small business as well as even just talking about the staff or about the owner and and the experience that you've had with them. Um, Signing up for their newsletter, if they have a newsletter, is really important. Even if it's not necessarily, you know, you're not gonna buy that product right away, it gets you seeing the information that's coming through and then maybe you'll jog your memory and say, oh, hey, I know somebody that was looking for this and then you can refer it to them or forward the newsletter on to somebody. Um, And then my last thing is going to their location if they have one and taking a picture of you, you know, with their product or at their location and sharing it to your social media as Mm -hmm. well and tagging the business because sometimes people get really bogged down with like branded content all the time. So when they see somebody that they know with that product, it kind of puts them in that product in a different environment a little bit and it gets them looking at it in a different way so all of those little things oh, can really those help are some great tips thank you very much next week i'm gonna do um top five ways that a small business can increase their following okay. on social media by kind of utilizing some of these things just in a different way so if you own a small business or you're trying to get into something like that then make sure that you tune into that hmm. That'll be helpful for me because my social media game is not on point. Yes, I've already been thinking about a few different things that (laughs) I was going to put on there that I thought would really help you. You know, I was thinking about this the other day and like a Facebook business page does really help. Yeah. And um, specifically for the demographic that is on Facebook, like that's one of the reasons why Pack Rim has, we really try to promote our Facebook page is because the demographic that we sell to is on there. Yeah. You know, and so I was thinking about that the other day day about you specifically because I thought that that would be a really good way for you to like share articles or just get your name out there um, posting photos of hey I'm at an open house today or whatever Mm -hmm. the more that that stuff gets shared around Facebook's really easy because you can just hit the share button I have a Facebook business page okay well that's good to know I don't ever use it I should I only have it so I can I have a chat feature on my website and if I 
connect my Facebook, then it'll go to me through Facebook. Perfect. Chat. Yes. That's the only reason I have. We it. have that through our um, website we too. And it's have, really helpful. Yes. We do have a team Facebook page. Yes. I know that I follow the team one. Yes. And so I'm going to have to make sure that I go on and follow your personal one too. But yeah, you should definitely engage with it more. I'm not sure. <laughs> Allie, Facebook is one of those things that I don't like. I don't really like Facebook, but the demographic that we sell to is on there. So that's why I use it so much. And I think that you'd probably benefit from that too. We'll we get can, you on there. We'll, we'll talk about okay. it. Okay. I'm going to do my top five next week and then maybe there'll be some things on there that you like. Okay. I know. Um, what's your next thing, Allie? Um, I wanted to talk about this show that I watched. That is so good on I Netflix. I watched the first episode. Did you? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's called Inventing Anna. Um, it's starring Julia Garner. from She's amazing. Ozark. And um, Anna Klump- Chlumsky. That's a hard word to say. Chlumsky. She's from My Girl. Yeah, see, and I don't... I've never seen that. What? I know. Sorry. You have to watch My I know. Girl. I know. Oh, my I know. God. I've been told this. Um, it's really good. It's about this uh, girl who is... Actually, I can't even say that. That'll give it away. Um, basically, she um, is being charged with fraud, like wire fraud and skipping out on hotel bills mm-hmm. and a bunch of stuff. And um, it's a true story, obviously, like some embellishment but really really interesting i finished watching it last night and i oh, you've watched loved the, it so how many episodes have come out the whole season the whole season oh you watched the entire thing yeah oh gosh okay so i am not even that far i've only watched the first episode um julia garner is fantastic yeah she's, she's a really good actress amazing actress um you know she's great in ozark especially this last bit of the season only because of how much emotion she's putting into Ow. her character um playing anna delfrey Delphi. Is Delph Delvi? Yeah. Thank you. Um, is a completely different character than what you see her in is in Ozark, and she's able to completely just pivot she has into a something else. Fake accent. Yeah, it's um it's like a British German Russian. Russian accent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. Um I I really like her. There's the first episode. You're not really sure how you feel about her character, and then you start to see these things start to come out a little bit. And at the end of the show, I said to Kurt, I. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be on her side or, or not. not. I just don't know. I kind of like stuff like that because yeah. you just don't know who who to side with. Yeah. That's kind of how I'm feeling about Pam and Tommy right now. Right. Because I just finished the... Oh, there's only four episodes out, right? When do the new episodes come out? Wednesday. Okay. So um, we just we just watched the fourth episode and I... Spoiler alert, even though this is common knowledge because it already is true, true real life. Oh my God, I cannot talk today. Um... I feel so bad for them because like of, of how Pam's feeling at work and yeah. she's not being noticed and then they're trying to have a baby and she miscarries. And I then, feel bad for Pam in real life and on the show. Yeah. I don't really feel bad for Tommy in any way. I mean, I feel bad for Tommy only in the sense that you can tell that he really, really loves her yeah. and that he obviously feels really bad for her for what's going on yeah. right now and then the whole sex tape scandal comes out and you can tell that he just genuinely like really cares about her I don't feel bad because he's such an asshole but two wrongs don't make a right either and it's like no. is that the best way to go about it I mean no. no right so I do feel bad that that happened to them because that shouldn't have and it could have been easily preventable um, but I agree with you he's a total dick and so he does deserve a little bit to come back to him but he got charged with domestic violence in real life a few years later after the timeline of the show really yes I didn't know that yeah like um, was he still with Pam yes oh I didn't know that I didn't even really realize that they had a kid together. Like when they I, do. yeah, I didn't realize that. And so when I started oh looking them goodness. up, I saw pictures of her like on the red carpet with a baby, and I had no yeah. idea. Well, one of their sons was on the reboot of The Hills. Oh, I yes. didn't know that. Um, I also didn't know that Tom Sandoval was on The Hills. Well, he made an appearance on The Hills. Well, whatever. <laughs> I saw um, a clip the other day and I had no well, idea. Well, you know Landon from Southern Charm also made an appearance on The Hills? Really? Yeah. Oh, she, that makes sense because yeah. she was friends with 
some of them, wasn't she? She was like the receptionist at like, I think, Bolt House. Right. Yes. I have to watch Southern Charm again. I really do. It's eh. a great show. Vanderpump Rules was way better. Having seen both. I don't know why, but that show just made me anxious. I don't know why. Because you were working was... in a restaurant, I think. But now you're not. That could be true. <laughs> That could be true because it, it drove me nuts how they were able to just leave their tables for so long well, and just go and chat. Real. They're like, filming it just a show. Blew my mind. <laughs> but um, I just there's so much drama in that show about oh, literally so nothing, and they were just like yelling at each other oh about nothing. And it got to a point where I was just like, I can't with this I, show. I watched an old episode recently, and I'm like, I want to start again from the beginning. And I've already done that like two how or three many times. Seasons are there? Nine. <laughs> Maybe I'll give it a. Try. It's so good. <laughs> I don't know. There's just so there's just so much to watch. Speaking of the Bachelor's on last night, oh. I didn't watch the whole episode. I only watched the first like 15 minutes this morning <laughs> while I was getting ready because I had to. It, and oh my god, I'm not going to say what happened because I don't want to spoil it. But oh, I'm so okay, happy about I what saw happened. An article today. I didn't click on it mm-hmm. because I don't care. Mm-hmm. But the headline said Clayton regrets going on the Bachelor, and I was like, huh. Well, I guess it doesn't end up with anyone then. <laughs> oh my God, the scenes for like the rest of the season, they pretty much show you who the final three are going to be and they're all crying. <laughs> all the women are crying. He tells them that he's in love with all of them. He tells them that he's, that he's slept with all of them and that he basically doesn't know who to choose. And then he's crying and he's like, I'm so broken. And all oh, the women are crying. Oh my it's God. Like, it's a madhouse. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's so interesting. Oh boy. What did you guys do for Valentine's Day? Um, well, um, on actual Valentine's Day, we did nothing at all because it's Monday. (laughs) Why does everyone say that? Who cares that it's Monday? Um, well, somebody, not me, was also hungover. Understandable, yes. That added to it. But we weren't planning on doing anything. Not surprised by that. Um, no. Um, Saturday, we took your advice and Mm. we got takeout from La Stella's. Oh. It was very good. What did you get? Uh, pizza. Yes, their pizza is delicious. Yes. Um, yeah. We did got you get it from pizza. the pizzeria or from, no, from the one on, on Wesley Street? Yeah. Um, the pizza was very good. And what else did we do? Oh, we watched a movie. We wanted to watch a romantic movie. So what did you pick? We watched to Say Anything. Like oh, from the 80s. I've seen that. It was okay. I like John Cusack. Oh, he's not my favorite. Well, like it's I'm like I don't but I'm not I lo- attracted to him or no. anything, but like I like him in movies. It, it was a good movie. It was mm-hmm. cute. Um, cute. I like that his sister in real life played his sister in the movie. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I like both of them. Um, Jeremy and I watched the movie Valentine's Day oh, on Sunday. Oh, we watched that last year only because it was just on TV. So yeah. we're like, ah, oh, whatever. We'll watch this, and it's like it's a pretty it's pretty cute, cute movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. That sounds good. <laughs> what I did like you that. guys do? Uh, we got takeout from La Stella. And, but <laughs> What'd we you did, get? We did like the meal kit. Oh, okay. Um, so Jeremy got a pepperoni pizza because mm-hmm. it's his favorite. That's what Kurt had. Yeah, he always gets that. And then um, I got the gnocchi, but I had oh, to make it. it. So like the ragu was already made and the gnocchi was like half made I think mm-hmm. so I just had to um, kind of heat both up and get them going and, and then add all my stuff and then it came with a Sunday, but we were just so full by the end of it that we couldn't do it and yeah. I'm trying not to eat any sugar yeah, so I'm that'll stay in there person. for a while well my grandmother and my grandpa dropped off these very lovely Valentine's Day desserts at our office yesterday and I, she got them from Thrifties and there was like a brownie and an eclair and a, and a cannoli and like all these things and I'm like great so <laughs> I have to eat these because my grandmother brought them for yes, me you do <laughs> so I ate half of them the other half are in my fridge but they were very delicious hmm. I know so nice aren't Good grandparents just the best I wouldn't know I don't have any <laughs> Oh my god, that was so depressing. <laughs> I do. Just kidding. I really love my grandparents. Well, I'm not kidding. I don't. But <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> Pat Grimm is going to be at the Bevin Home Show. Ooh, when is it? March fourth to sixth. Ooh. So on the Friday, March fourth, uh, the doors open at twelve, and then it goes until four p.m. on the Sunday. So we're going to be there the entire weekend. So please make sure you drop by and check out there. our booth. I love a yes. home show. Yep. I, I love a home show too. We went to the last one. Yes. It was really fun. So I'm really excited that we're going to be in this one. We have a huge corner booth and we're going to have a few of our different products there. I'm very much looking forward to it. 
How exciting. Yes. So please make sure that you drop by our booth and follow us on Instagram for updates throughout the entire weekend because we're going to be posting a lot of content. So Content. Content. So please make sure that you're sharing and engaging and liking and tagging and commenting. And saving. And saving. (laughs) That'd be great. Could you do that? That'd be awesome. (laughs) Oh, man. So who is your favorite performance at the Super Bowl? Like, who are you most excited about? Well... I was most excited about Eminem. Me too. And I was kind of underwhelmed by the lack of Eminem that I got. Mm -hmm. But I was very happy um, with Snoop Dogg because he's just great all around. And he's just so fun to watch. And he's, you know, got a great voice. Um, So I was very, very happy about Dre and Snoop for sure. I, you know, I wish that Eminem had been on there a little bit longer. I would really like to see Eminem in concert. I've always really wanted that. when I grew up, my dad got me into listening to Eminem, so I very much like attribute a lot of my love for that kind of music mm-hmm. to my dad, for sure. Um, I watched Straight Outta Compton last night. Oh, did you? Because <laughs> watching the halftime show really made me want to listen to that music again, so I've been like rolling around in my CRV, bumping Dre for two days, <laughs> and we watched Straight Outta Compton last night, which is a great movie, if you've never seen it. I have not. You haven't? Nope. I'm like surprised by that because you what? you like Dr. Dre and Snoop. And I mean, it talks a lot about I that. I like them, but I it's it's not my thing. I don't listen to rap. Oh yeah, that's it's fair. Just, I mean, what I like about the movie is there's a lot of parallels to what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. It takes place when the Rodney King beatings happen yes. and when the riots in LA <clears throat> happen, and it shows a lot about how this minority is being treated back then and how that's still happening and how this group wanted to talk about their daily lives and their reality. And a lot of people didn't like what they had to say, but in, you know, in reality, that's, that's what they have to deal with every day. And, um, it was crazy to see just how they rose to such insane stardom Mm -hmm. and, how that kind of created this new generation and era of music and they were kind of the front runners of that and then just to see all of the different artists how they all went in to do their own thing and it, it's very very interesting I, I've like I like it I've seen that movie maybe like four or five times oh wow that's yeah a lot. <laughs> it's good I mean I like that music too but mm-hmm. it's it is very interesting just to see the lives that they lived in um, and how they were affected and what they then created right so and it ends with then talking about where Dr. Dre has come to now and um, you know where Ice Cube's gotten to now and all the different things that they've done so it's good Hmm. yeah so you know that's a good one and um, The Defiant Ones is also a really good show it's a five part mini series I think it's on HBO and it's all about Dre and how he started as well as like Jimmy Iovine who worked with Stevie Nicks um, and Dr. Dre and how they found Eminem and just like what they've done to the music industry it's really cool. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you should go and watch it. <laughs> yeah. Just got all the tips. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Well, I don't really have much else to say. Maybe we should just keep this either. a short one. <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, oh, I was going to ask you, how was going to the gym yesterday? Oh, my God. It was so good. Yeah. It was probably like the first time... <clears throat> in a really long time that I felt good enough the day after the Super Bowl to go to the gym. Um, so it was nice. Um, I ran. I'm not a runner. I hate running more mm-hmm. than anything, but I just like turned on some good music and I and yeah. I ran and I felt really good. I normally start with at least like a 15, 20 minute treadmill. Yeah. Half I usually run, just half walk. walk um, but that's kind of how I felt yesterday too. I don't know why, but I just had so much, had energy. So much energy. And that's what I did. I just put my yeah. music in and, and went. I find it's easier when there's a TV that I can like focus my brain on something yeah. other than me running. Um, but yeah, I'm glad. Like that's that's literally exactly how I felt in the gym mm-hmm. yesterday too. Because I haven't been to the gym in months. Yeah. And uh, I thought I was going to be just like a big piece of shit, but I wasn't. And I had really a lot of great energy and I felt really mm-hmm. proud of myself after. I'm so yeah. That's good. And now the restrictions have been lifted for gyms and fitness classes. Yes. So there's no capacity anymore. So that means that I can actually get into yoga because oh, it's yeah. been absolutely yoga. impossible. 
because they they only had 10 spots available. So if you didn't get in there immediately as soon as it opened, yeah. there's no way you were getting in. No. So I'm so excited about that. I can go back to going to yoga like three to four times a week. So Nice. I know. That's exciting. Very. Oh, well, that's all I got too. Well, Give this a short one. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening as always. And we'll see you next week. Us. Please follow us. Engage with us. Share everything.